Thanks for joining us, everyone. Glad to be here and glad that you're here uh, with us. We would just, you know, wanted to take a couple of minutes and just talk about AI and how excited we are for AI uh, in the future. So uh, join us for a minute and let's have a chat. Starting with that, what do we think or why is this era of AI exciting for clients? Hey, thanks, Andrew Della. So happy to be here. Uh, why don't I start? You know, we are hearing a lot about AI, not only in the consumer world, we're hearing a lot about generative AI capabilities, we're hearing about AI and co-pilots for Microsoft and a lot of other platform players. This is a very exciting time. AI is not new, but the fact that everything is happening at the same time, we have a revolution in low code happening, which allows citizen developers to actually lean in and test new technologies. We have got generative AI capabilities and platforms available today. And we have got, you know, the robotic process automation inside of the house also very mature. All of these things, the trifecta coming together are creating a very exciting time for customers to actually get their hands on it and test it in real business world scenarios. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. I mean, we're already helping our clients incorporate Copilot Studio into their low code and power platform governance models because immediately they can see how low code is going to help democratize AI even further across our organizations. Yeah, you know, AI is already evolving and specializing by role based functions. Microsoft launched Copilot for sales, for service, for finance to support this trend. Uh, we're already seeing companies in the high tech and manufacturing industries embrace this. We partnered with one of our customers to activate Copilot for sales for 8,000 people on their sales team and deployed 16,000 Microsoft 365 Copilot licenses for the rest of their organization. Leveraging Copilot Studio, as Antonella mentioned, you know, we're, we're also helping our uh, and other customers in, in manufacturing layer in generative. AI capabilities into their existing field sales uh, mobile applications. So, so uh, you know, uh, helping enhance uh, uh, some of their uh, their thing that solutions they already have in place. And not only that, Steve, but we've actually been implementing Copilot in service for some of our customers. One is which one of which has actually managed to have a saving of, of like two hundred fifty thousand euro per annum. And to be honest, that's only with some of their um, some of their divisions. We're now planning to actually roll this out to their global um, company so they can actually look forward to even more savings. Not only that, but with your implementation of Copilot Studio and several contact center customers, we've actually been able to see an improvement of CSAT scores by up to 40% for several of them. So I think that they're very happy with Copilot and Generative AI because of these improvements, the saving operational costs, but also the customer satisfaction and a lot of pressure relief from agents as well. That's amazing. So what do you think, you know, helped our success? How did we get here where we are today? Um, and so I think it is a series of small steps. You know, the people view this lens as if this, gen this has just happened overnight or in the last few months. You know, the term AI was coined in, in the 1950s and organizations have been using some form of artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms to be able to help them become more efficient, right? But it was in the purview of few people, right? Or few organizations because it was very expensive. You got a lot of data science behind it. The platforms didn't have inherent AI capability. And then as you count these baby steps and these steps moving forward, right? This big democratization of AI, the evolution of generative AI just happened last October one year ago and see how fast it has grown. You know, it has put the 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 power of AI embedded into platforms that then makes its way into business decision makers and consumers. So think about it as almost the consumerization of AI is what we are experiencing today. We have used AI in the consumer world. Our phones have AI in it. Our smart speakers have uh, assistants have got AI in it, built into it. But now the business is starting to see the impact of AI because they can truly embed AI capabilities in transforming business processes. On the other side, you've got, again, small steps. Robotic process automation hybrid has been around for a long, long time. Certain industries have used RPA just for more of process automation. Look at the automotive industry, for example, right? Look at look at contact center space, look at, uh, look at BPOs, business process outsourcing units. They have always added to more efficiency by using some calls back end process automation. Today, RPA is again thanks to low code availability of low code and the abilities of things like say power automate to inject hyper automation into business processes. It's just more widely available. 
So is it been a series of steps? You're looking at it from a, from a shorter time window. It seems like everything happened today, but I think we are in a very exciting spot because all the things are coming together at the same time. Now, well said, Michal. And, and as you said, AI is not new and many solutions have been built. We've been building these with ProCode. Um, but Microsoft's partnership with OpenAI, in addition to its commitment to democratizing app and automation development through low-code platforms such as Power Platform, it has really opened up many possibilities and opportunities to accelerate innovation with AI. I think that that's where you're, you're seeing that, that growing excitement. Not only that, but to be honest, we at Avanade, we've been there for the entire journey. I mean, we're known for innovation. And through our journey, we've actually been helping our customers by ensuring that they're in the right space at the right time and that they're, they're easy, easy, it's an easier adoption of these new functionality, as we mentioned before. It's moving so quickly that they really need to understand the impact to their business, whether that be security or compliance, or are there is their data in the right state to take advantage of generative AI. So that's how we at Avanade have actually been helping with this as well. Yeah. So we know AI has been around forever and we've been using the tools for quite a while, but of all the buzz is of course around agentic capabilities. So how do you think these you know, asynchronous agents will manifest um, across different parts of the customer life cycle? How, how are agents gonna play a part in all of this? Look, we had AI, we have AI, right? AI by itself uh, can provide guidance, it can provide context, it can be a, it can be a tool in the kit. Right. But when you start adding um, asynchronous, actionable capabilities to I, that's where the magic starts to happen. So you mentioned the term agentic capabilities. Think about agents. We are like, this is not sci fi. This is not the future. It is today. Like agent capability where AI has the power to think based on the huge amount of learning that it can do in a very short time. Principles like reinforcement learning where their AI is self teaching itself and understanding, you know, um, based on patterns it is observing. And then now it has the ability to take asynchronous actions and get tasks done without human intervention, with human oversight, I would say, but without human intervention, where humans are actually going to change the equation with technology. Instead of just relying on technology and, and you know more for productivity, I see the relationships changing between what AI does and human does tomorrow. You know, there are certain uh, business processes. Let's take contact center for an example. There are CSR, customer service representative, actually has a buddy on the side, an AI buddy on the side. And maybe in the, in the near future is the AI buddy that's actually doing most of the work and the human is actually providing guidance. So we are changing of roles. Is happening where well, you know in in our current uh, in our current world, and I feel like that's very really exciting. This new agentic capabilities will open a whole new door, which also you know I'll, I'll come to this in a bit, but also opens up the door of how we actually uh, do this in a responsible way. We make decisions and tease decisions, and we we help AI make decisions which are non biased and are more are more responsible decisions, like we as humans do in everyday life. Yeah, speaking of humans, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but we're seeing AI being used in role-based situations. So in supply chain, uh, you know, we're applying these new AI capabilities to our existing accelerators who support specific roles, such as a materials planner, a production planner, a warehouse manager. Um, for example, we've evolved our control tower solution for materials planner to leverage generative AI capabilities of Copilot Studio to scan all the inventory alerts, create a summary of what the root cause is, and provide a set of recommended next steps, you know. And so agents could be used to help with that process of like, a, you know, do I transfer a material from another warehouse? Do I adjust uh, the throughput of the production plan? Or do I open up a purchase order? So how do I track all of these moving parts uh, of, of the organization uh, in, in in this process? And, and really, these enhancements help our planners tremendously by being less reactive and more proactive in their day-to-day -day job. So that's, that's uh, you know, spot on with humans. And the thing is also, again, with humans, one of the one of the challenges and one of the concerns that we often hear, especially about agentic copilots or agentic AI, um, is oh, is this going to replace opportunities for actual humans? The challenge is 
from a contact center, I'm looking at this from a contact center standpoint, is in some regions, there just aren't enough agents. Not only that, but there is even more work, which means that the existing agents are being extremely overwhelmed. So this actually provides an opportunity to relieve the pressure from the agents and allow them to really provide even much more valuable and quality service to customers and also enable businesses and um, businesses to actually deliver the service that they want to deliver where there might not be enough agents as well. So I actually think that this is an excellent thing and I can't wait to see it. I totally agree. I know that, uh, you know, we think about agents and in empowering sort of the individual employee. Um, you know, we also want to think about, to your point, you know, Tricia, how just, you know, we need to infuse AI, not just agents, not just the key, but across the entire organization. Also excited for how low code can help enable that, right? Think about all the technical barriers. I mean, we need to move at the pace of AI. We see how quickly it's changing. We see how I already can't live without, you know, chat GPT in my personal life. So imagine, right? How do we, and things like low code will really help kind of keep up with the pace of AI. Like it'll help you do things like prototype more quickly, test out these AI models. You know, it'll help you sort of really get rid of those barriers that we had with traditional development and how long it takes. Future is pretty exciting, that's for sure. So speaking about, you know, now and in the future, we, we know how agents will work, how people will work with them. Um, but what do we predict, you know, the what do we predict more in terms of the future of, of, of AI and how, how we're going to start working with it and how we're going to work with our clients? I, I think uh, we gave a few glimpses in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the previous statements we made. I think it's going to be human and AI working side by side. This is to Trisha's point is not taking over the work of humans, right? Because I think there is just not enough capacity in the system. Right now, in, 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 in all industries across the board, you need more capacity. Instead of adding just human capacity, I think it's it, the, the potential is to I make humans more productive, may, maybe add more capacity to humans by actually giving them out, like I said, uh, you know, uh, AI buddy with them. So add capacity with humans and, and uh, agents working side by side. Agents teaching, uh, you know, agents teaching humans uh, because sometimes the AI thinking is nonlinear. And that can actually be out of box thinking in a slightly different way to do things, but humans also teaching and and giving oversight to AI. So I feel I feel the future is is very complementary. There is not this you know one or the other. I think it's going to be a complementary. Yeah. I for one can't wait to have my own personal Jarvis. <laughs> and to be honest, I was actually thinking about this as well in terms of the future as I you know think even more about it. One of the things that we're seeing in terms of the trend is how these systems are designed. It's very important, and this is really going to, this, this will make sense in a second, but it's really important that it's designed with humans in mind. For example, I'm now thinking more from a conversational AI standpoint, going into generative AI. We have a lot of people from, a, from who are customers basically feeding back that they feel that it can become too robotic. They, they're losing that human touch. So in, in the future, what I envision is just what Vishal said. It's humans and AI working together where humans really need to kind of lend their voice to how the conversational AI journey is designed to be more natural so that aids so of customers actually feel listened to they feel supported right and that the human that there is actually someone behind there should be there will be someone behind it but they need to feel it because even though there is today it can sometimes feel a little bit robotic and in the future i think that's going to go away and i think that it's going to sound more natural it's going to be more natural and humans will be able to really take that step forward and not be led by ai but they'll go hand in hand yeah, I think uh, one of the one uh, one of the underlying themes that hasn't really been addressed and needs to be part of the future is trust and establishing trust uh, with uh, the the new world with AI and 
agents and things like that. And I, I see a future where uh, the tools will be used to monitor itself, right? So agents tracking other agents and uh, AI using uh, being used to to verify that the answers that are being generated are not hallucinations, right? Uh, I think there there are uh, uh, certain tools that are not uh, here today, but will be in the future, very near future, um, to to create this uh, this level of trust with the, the the new capabilities that are are helping our humans, and and I think that's going to be very important going forward. Excellent. So thank you so much, everyone. I really enjoyed this conversation, Michelle, Steve, Tricia. I think it was great. Do we have any closing thoughts or requests that we'd like to make before we end off? Well, you know, a lot of our customers, a lot of people out there, organizations are going through this journey of trying to demystify AI and what it means to them. I think they, they need to look at the entire Microsoft stack and see how that all comp complements each other to give them the capability to actually infuse AI in their, in their business, but also you know work with partners like us and others to really do an assessment of their AI capability. Because it is a step-by-step -step process. You just can't activate AI right away. There's a lot of data work that needs to happen. You need to look at you know your data estate and look at your process processes, just uh, taking the current process that you have today, just adding AI really, you know, may not give you the best impact, right? So I think there are, you know, they should assess their own capability, work with partners and other people in the field who do this for a living and see what does that, what does the assessment of the capability look like and what is the journey that they need to go through to actually take the benefits of it. Excellent. Well, you heard it, everyone. Thank you so much. And please join Thank us. You for participating in an agent discovery workshop. We're here to help. So thank you for joining us talking about AI and have a great time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.